This is Lee Buckner, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about perfectly competitive markets and also perfectly competitive firms. Uh, before I get into a, a quick note, I've made a separate video where I go over how perfectly competitive firms should go about behaving if they want to maximize their profits. So if that's what you're looking for, go check out that video. So perfectly competitive markets. Uh, perfect competition is a situation where you've got a lot of firms that are all selling basically the exact same thing. So in perfectly competitive markets, there are a few rules. And so if a market doesn't meet all of these rules, it's going to be a different market structure. There's be four basic uh, market structures in microeconomics. Uh, perfect competition uh, is one of those four. So here are the rules. Number one, multiple firms. So um, if you've got lots of firms selling stuff that's all pretty close to one another, it makes that uh, requirement met. Number two, all of the firms are selling a homogenous product. Now, when I say homogenous, what I mean by that is all the products being sold by all the firms in the market are considered identical or interchangeable uh, by all of the buyers. Number two, there are so many firms in that market that no one firm in the market has the ability to influence overall market price. So for example, um, classic example of perfectly competitive markets is gonna be corn farming. So in the United States, uh, in any given year, there are 20 to 30,000 corn farmers. Um, it's lots of firms. Uh, no one of those firms has the ability to make overall corn prices go up or down if they increase or decrease the size of their production. So that's what I mean when I say no one firm has the ability to influence or control market price. Uh, number three, all the firms uh, in the market have low barriers to market entry and low barriers to market exit. So what I mean by that is low barriers to market entry. If there are firms that are making something else, uh, there are some of them be easy for them to get into the market. So again, with the corn example, uh, there are lots of soybean farmers in the United States. It's very easy or a low barrier to market entry uh, for soybean farmers to go into corn. Low barriers to market exit, what that means is it's really easy for the firms in a perfectly competitive market to get out of it and go do something else. So again, to corn, uh, if you are a corn farmer and you wanna get out of corn farming, it's very easy to switch to becoming a soybean farmer. So that's low or no uh, barrier to market exit. Uh, last thing is all of the firms in that market should expect long run normal profit. Remember, normal profit means economic profits equal to zero. So the idea here is that if a bunch of firms in the market in one year make a lot of profits, you expect new firms to enter that market driving down the price, and that driving down the price will make it so that a typical firm in the market is back to making zero economic profit. So those are your basic rules for perfectly competitive markets. Now let's talk about the graphs for perfectly competitive markets and perfectly competitive firms. So for a perfectly competitive market graph, it looks just like your basic supply and demand graph with a downward slope demand and an upward slope supply. The demand for your perfectly competitive market graph represents all of the buyers for the good that sold in that market. The supply represents the quantity produced and sold by all of the sellers. So again, to our corn uh, example, the supply curve in your perfectly competitive market graph represents all of the sellers of corn, meaning all of the farmers. The demand curve for the market represents all of the buyers. So that's all the animal feed, all the ethanol, um, all the high fructose corn syrup, all of it. At the equilibrium point for that market graph, you get your market quantity, and more importantly, the market price. So that equilibrium or market price becomes the demand for the perfectly competitive firm. So if the firm we're talking about means just one corn farmer, that market price becomes just a flat line uh, for demand for that one farmer or your perfectly competitive firm. So on perfectly competitive firms, demand is a flat line. 
when demand is a flat line, marginal revenue, which is the change in revenue if you make and sell one additional unit of your product, is also flat and on top of demand. Typically, when you see a graph for a perfectly competitive firm, you're gonna see one flat line, uh, one horizontal line with a uh, label D equals MR or demand equals marginal revenue. They're different calculations, but for perfectly competitive firms, they are both always going to be equal regardless of quantity.